Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is the week in charts. I'm sure I thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. Looks like the word is starting to get out. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. So what are we going to talk about? Well, obviously current market conditions, I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides until we get to the live charts that you can ask about whatever you want. Also, your favorite stock picks, and if you could also hold off on those until we get the live charts to make sure that we get everything done. And also, ask about one ticker at a time. That's also for your benefit, so I don't actually delete one. I guess the $64,000 question is, is the crypto bubble done? And we'll get into that in quite a bit of detail, and I have a lot to say about bubbles. I also want to talk about discretion, squeezing out nice additional profits. The model portfolio I track on a mechanical basis, but personally, I add a little discretion to it and I recommend you do too. In fact, I actually talked about what I was doing today in Facebook, just so you guys could kind of see it uh, as close to real time as possible. And that'll make a lot more sense in just a minute. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I still like from Greg Morris. So is Bitcoin and other crypto, for that matter, dead? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about bubbles a little bit. So as I've said over the last year or so, in fact, I think I went back and I found a column I did several years ago and, and looks like the same sort of, I mentioned the same sort of thing. And I think that this, uh, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but one gentleman in particular has been really poo-poo in Bitcoin. And believe me, he does it every day. And and I, I remember in the most, most recent run, it was down around 10, and it was 15, and it was 20, and it was 25, and it was 30. And then I noticed recently, he's like, I told you so. <laughs> I predicted that this I told you so would happen. So the whole time he was completely against Bitcoin. He didn't make a dime trading Bitcoin. And sometimes I have a hard time believing some of these people are trading. Not so much the Bitcoin thing, because I get it. I guess if you're a stock guy and a pure stock guy and not a, a trend following moron like me, willing to go where the action is. As I've said a thousand times, a friend of mine years ago, he's an Indian chap, Indian from um, India. And he's like, <laughs> if they found out that intravenous drug use was going up, he would be buying hypodermic needles. <laughs> What's funny is whenever I imitate uh, clients and, and people sending me emails and stuff, I, I use that voice. But that's pretty much close to his actual voice. He doesn't sound Indian at all, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, I I, I don't know if I'm that bad, but uh, intravenous drug use is not going up, is it? <laughs> so anyway, I think you can make a lot of money in a bubble, and I just absolutely love bubbles. And I've got some commentary on the website probably from 10 years ago about how much I love bubbles. And I said something a while back that I thought was pretty eloquent, and I think it's a little bit more eloquent than what I have here. And after I tried to remember what I said, it made me realize that I'm channeling Keynes more than likely. But anyway, bubbles go much further and farther, further, and last much longer than most are willing to believe. You can make a lot of money trading a bubble, or you could pontificate your brilliance so that someday you could say, I told you so. I got that Carrie Underwood song in my head. I told you so. <laughs> That's pretty aggravating. So speaking of Mr. Keynes, he was a famous economist. And he said that markets could stay irrational a lot longer than you could stay solvent. And I agree, and that's a great thing. Now, getting back to Bitcoin, not dead yet? It might not be. Now, there's always a danger in doing this. It gives you perspective by going out to longer-term time frames. Now, you got to be careful if you're a day trader trading one-minute bars, okay, and then you go out to 30-minute bars or 60-minute bars or daily charts trying to justify 
holding the position longer than you should past your stop, for instance. So it's a, there's always a danger in doing this type of analysis, but it does help to see help you to see the forest for the trees. That's not to say that Bitcoin isn't in trouble, at least in the daily chart, and we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. But it's kind of fascinating, and I was shocked myself when I was doing a little research earlier today. So this is a weekly chart, and this is the ACP platform, by the way, by Stock Charts, and Metastock has the same Landry light down here too. I, I really like it in, in ACP. It's kind of a, I, don't, I hate to use the word quick and dirty because that, that sounds like an insult, but it, I just like the way you can just tie, uh, punch it in on the fly, and it's really nice and fast. But anyway, if you look at the Landry light on the bottom, this just counts the number of bars, okay? It's just a number count, not magnitude, as I say each week when we talk about Landry light. I've tripped up a lot of people to a point where I almost feel like I need to change the, the questions, but I purposely trip you guys up to make sure you understand what it is on the back end of the site in the members' courses. Anyway, you could see that we've had nice Landry light and we had a pullback to the moving average, as you can see down here, nice little graphical representation, or do as I like to do, just look at the chart. Now, in this particular case, this is a 30-day exponential moving average, which lately has been my favorite moving average. So looks pretty good. In fact, if you're if you've been around for a while, at least with my methodology, you could plainly, as plain as day, see that that's a TKO, a trend knockout. And to those new to the methodology, trend knockout knocks out the weak hands. It attracts some shorts. And I almost hate to say this because I've got a couple of friends. <laughs> they'll be visited soon. They're going to shoot me. And they got, they got hit pretty hard in the Bitcoin thing. But I actually came in overnight short Bitcoin. And then uh, obviously I got knocked out a lot of those uh, Shiite coins. And net net, I think I did okay overnight. I thought it was wiped out like most people thought they were or were and luckily I was short Bitcoin but I didn't cover low enough admittedly all right so I don't think Bitcoin's dead just yet but when we take a look at the daily chart there are, are a lot of concerns I wouldn't rush out and buy it other than maybe like 15 minute breakouts and all and I, I know some of you guys in the Facebook group are doing that and I saw some private texts coming across it Truth be told, I was kind of goaded into a few trades where I sort of did the same thing. But other than the shorter term intraday stuff, I would just hold off on buying any. But I think it's important to keep that weekly chart in mind. If that weekly TKO triggers, I think it could be off to the races, especially with this nice little flush out we had. Now, let's talk about beating the system with discretion. And in this episode, I want to talk about squeezing out additional profits. As I said in the intro, the service portfolio tracks everything mechanically. And in my own personal trading, I'll put a layer of discretion on. And it's not like you have to do discretion every day, every day. And I think I went in and looked one time at 10 years or so of the service. And I think it's like once a quarter or so. And then maybe a little bit more frequently with something like this, where it's positive discretion, okay? a way to squeeze out a little bit more additional profits as opposed to like damage control where you got a stock that gaps against you and you wait to see if you get that ogre and if not, you get out because you, the bomb's already blown up, right? And other things like a near miss on a profit target and you can kind of argue, well, Dave, that's really wasn't that cut and dry. You know, you're saying discretion, but I do use discretion in my own accounts. Now, this was the setup, Sky T. If you go to davelandry.com slash archives, you can look at these setups in my stock chart show, which I might carry over to the weekend charts. I think it'd be kind of fun. I know you want to party with me, right? <laughs> but I do a mystery chart. And usually the mystery chart, I'd say, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but I'd say probably 99% or 100% comes straight off the service. So when I'm doing my chart, stock chart show which is now recorded we haven't gone back live yet but i'll go in when i put the slides together and i'll grab whatever setups i have for the day and i'll put them in as mystery charts and it's mystery because i don't give you the symbol out of fairness to everybody on the service anyway if you go in and look at the archives you'll see a lot of these mystery charts so they come straight from the service so this was uh set up a while back 
going into 428, April 28th. So this was actually a service for 429 if you're looking for the archives. And the entry was 20, protective stop was 17, and the IPT was 23. So that gives you three points risk, okay? Stopped out, you lose three points, hit the IPT, you make three points, and then hopefully, I know I just said hope, but hopefully you're able to ride it for a long, long time after that. Now, let's take a look at the daily chart, and let me just remind you, those are the parameters up there. So the stop was down here, the entry was here, that's three points, nice little IPO pattern. To those familiar with buy at B, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, okay? The first closing high is actually a buy, but this thing started to pull back a little bit. So I thought it could be two things, A, a pullback, and B, also kind of a buy at B. By the time it triggers, it's going to be pushing into brand new highs, and that's why I like this particular stock. And the IPT is up here around 23. So let's take a look what happened. We got a trigger, and it was off to the races on the first day. Feeling pretty damn good. Feeling a little smug, maybe. Close at a new closing high, so that's a buy at B for those keeping score. Yeah, it's a little above $20 a share, but in more recent times, I've been a little bit more lenient. I'll go up to almost to $30 a share. But technically, yeah, $20 rule, above $20 a share, but I liked it. And it was a different setup anyway. So here's my buys down here. 2005 and 2013. And I had buys in another account too. And I don't know if I got in a little later, that's a little skittish. By the way, you'll find, and I read this in Market Wizards, but I knew it empirically from experience. You'll find that some of your best trades have the worst skittage, and that's because everybody wants in. Sometimes you get a trade where you get a, a really good fill, and it's like, oh no, you know, they gave it to me. And and Linda in Linda Rasky's book, Damon, uh, her husband was talking about once where he was an S and P futures broker, and and some some big guy bought like 400 contracts, big contracts or something. And he says, okay, you got your price, and the guy comes back with, oh no, and it's like. <laughs> What do you mean you don't know? I got your price. That's a good thing. He's like, no, it just means I got them too easy. And I don't know the rest of the story. He might have flipped them out. But it's a, it's a good book, by the way, Trading Sardines. My wife was kind enough to clean up in here, so the books got picked up. But anyway, Trading Sardines, Linda Rasky. So this thing kind of bored us to death. We were profitable and giving up profits, giving up profits, kind of profitable again. And then we were actually at a loss in here for a while. Now, this is a couple of weeks. And it used to be really hard for me to hold on to trades. But when I'm doing this trading service, I'm like, oh, you know what? I have to follow along. If I'm telling other people to follow along, then I have to follow along myself. So I try to close my eyes and not drop F-bombs when I'm in a position that's underwater for a week or two. Yeah, I still do, though. But... <laughs> But anyway, it took a little while, but it finally did take off. Now, the initial profit target was 23 right in here, and you can see it exceeded that today. Now, let me show you what I did on the trade today. So it opens up and didn't do a whole lot, but then it begins to rally. It hits that initial profit target. Now, truth be told, I didn't notice it until I think this bar here, it had already come back in a little bit, okay? And then I got to thinking, it's like, okay, well, this thing is kind of stabilizing there. I'm going to have to exit half of my shares somewhere around that 23 to make sure I lock in half. But let me just see what happens. So I put in, in this particular account, I had 600 shares. I was a little bit, I was wondering why I was a little light. I noticed that in my IRA, one of my bigger accounts, I had a much larger position. And that's why I only had 600 shares originally here. Because the remnant service at 667, usually when it's above a number, I'll round up to like the next, I'll round up to like 800 or something like that. Depending, depends on how my trading's going too. Maybe I maybe I wasn't doing fantastic, so I round, rounded down a little bit. Don't remember exactly why I did go up to 667 shares, but I do trade in round numbers. But anyway, I got to thinking, okay, what if I put in a stop about a quarter point below the market, make that a trailing stop, and then 
it begins to rally a little bit. So I went to a half a point stop. And then on that big bar there, on that same bar, I said, well, you know what? Let me give it a one bar trailing stop. So here's the deal. If it comes all the way back in one point, then I exit at the same price that I was supposed to exit at anyway, okay? So it's a break even as far as the system is concerned. My portfolio is gonna look a lot like the mechanical portfolio, which I'll pull up in just one second. So I just let that run and I went on with my life. And you could see that it did have a pretty nice rally for most of the day. And I got out a few minutes before the close at 26.26. Okay, so 26, 26 minus 23, which was the initial profit target, is $3.26 times 300 shares. That's an additional 9.78. Now, I did this across multiple accounts, so I had a pretty good day, at least as far as Sky T is concerned. And as you can see, I squeezed out some additional profits. And this is one of the reasons I know it sounds like I'm trying to crawfish i don't know if crawfish makes sense but crawfish crawfish walks backwards in louisiana we have a term crawfish means you're trying to like say oh well you know maybe not or whatever and back down on something but the reason i don't publish official results is because they could be made a lot better with little things like discretion on a trade like this so as you can see extra 1k that's better than a poke in the eye and again you do that across more than one account and you're having a pretty good day so this is what it looks like in the portfolio. And you can see mechanically exiting at 23, we'd have made 1,000 or 1% 1 on a 100K account. You can't see it, it's up here somewhere, it says 100K. And that's what the model is based on. And, and by the way, the, bot, the model does not compound. So technically you'd add whatever this number would be plus whatever closed profits and losses are for the year. And then you would add that in or for the last, 10 years or however long I've been doing this, 15 or whatever. And you would compound, but I don't do compounding. But if you do compound, as long as something is profitable, profitable, compounding really makes it work a lot, lot better. But anyway, you can see 1,000 and you can see it closed right about where I got out. So at 2630, instead of making a thousand dollars, you would make like twenty one hundred dollars. So I just want to show you that real quick. And that's a way to kind of milk, so to speak, or squeeze, so to speak, out a few, a little additional profits whenever these things run like this. You get into like a SPOC, which are, you know, the balloons off the rose in the SPOCs now, but used to be in the SPOCs. And sometimes with something like a biotech or a hot little IPO like this, it might run 10 points past your initial profit target. Okay. And you can trail that stop all day. And God, I love these automated trailing stops. Now I used to get my ass handed to me in Forex using them. And I realized that there were some errors in my ways. I'd, I was probably putting them too tight and it spiked up and stopped me out. But in stocks, they're absolutely beautiful. And today I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put a really tight one in. Okay, now I'm up a half a point past my initial profit target. Let me go to half a point. Okay, now I'm up one point, let me go to one point. And I never did widen it past one point. Because I figured if it continued to rally, three hundred dollars per hundred k is that's a that's a lot to give up. And if I if I widen it to two, then I'm going to give up six hundred dollars. And so I just left it at one point and let the chips fall where they may. Okay, Lawrence says hi, Dave. Hope all is well. Yeah, as as good as could be expected. <laughs> There's always something to worry about. I'm still learning your IPO process. I'm starting to get some confidence in these early buy B setups and also the fact that IPOs kind of follow their own drum rather than being too correlated to the overall market. Amen, Laurent. And you, know, you kind of backed into something there. If you go into the trading service, you'll notice tomorrow's setup is an IPO. And I think that EDR in here was an IPO recently i'm pretty sure on that we could pull it out when we get to the live charts by the way if you're not an edr cash in your grandkids your kids college funds you know hawk the wife's juror just put everything in there <laughs> i'm half kidding no 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 don't do that please don't do that i'm not even i'm, I'm fully kidding okay 
But yeah, sometimes, now here's the thing. If we get into a bona fide liquidation market, okay, where gold goes down, bonds go down, stocks go down, cryptocurrencies go down, hadn't quite figured out how to throw cryptocurrencies into the mix. But I know if you see bonds going down and the dollar going down and gold going down and stocks going down, the SHTF, the SH is hitting the fan, okay? SHT, the SHTF, okay. The shit's in the fan. <laughs> Who cares? I just demonetized my, my, my uh, I just demonetized my video. George says, thanks for showing that. Oh, you're welcome, George. And you know, that's a thing. And, and, and that's the beauty of the, the Facebook group is I can throw these things out near real time or real time, or at least tell you what I'm doing when I think about it. It's like, you know, I did it. And then I was like, oh crap, let me tell everybody what's going on. And I think, I think that's the missing piece to all this. Because for years I put out the service and people were like, what is this? You know? And like recently I had a couple of people sign up and within a month they're gone. And I'm thinking like, I don't know that I could have done anything better. You know, you just got a couple of big winners. I mean, if you just got that one winner within the first month, not that we always catch a big winner in the first month or anything, you should be very happy. So maybe I'm doing a poor job of, of onboarding people. But I think if I can get you guys into the Facebook group, then we can all kind of go through this thing together and of course learn from each other all right let's hop out into the live charts before we do that let me see if i can uh take a look at a couple things in the acp platform and we'll do that real quick and then we'll hop out to the live charts live charts in uh in tc for the overall market i'm happy with 2310 just messed up no, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, shoot, that's better than a poke in the eye, right? So here's Bitcoin. And I know it looks a little bit better on a weekly chart. Let's just take a look at a weekly real quick, like I just showed. So in a weekly chart, your bow ties haven't crossed over, obviously. And by the way, as long as the close is just above or just at the 30 EMA, they won't cross over. They can't, okay? And well, I guess technically it would have to be above the, the 20 EMA, but you kind of get the idea. Much harder to bow tie if you're at or near the 30 EMA. I'm um, having incredible thirst. I, I'm not gonna say what I did because I don't wanna be one of those people, but um, I did something last night and it made me thirsty today. <laughs> but my arm's not sore, so I'll give you a hint. No, it wouldn't work out. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, TKO on a weekly chart, still looks kind of bullish to me, okay? Um, where would I buy it? About 50K, okay? If you were looking to position on a weekly basis, still looks pretty damn good, right? Let's take a look at a daily chart on the Bitcoin. Daily, not so much, okay? Daily, we got a bow tie down. Now, it's not exactly off of all time highs. It was back here, okay? Now, technically, if you're paying attention to bow ties, technically this bow tie here, sell signal, is still in effect as far as the top is concerned until and unless you take out 65K, okay? So remember, when you get a transitional setup, notice the green down here, uptrend proper order goes to red, and there's little or no yellow. In this case, there's no yellow in between. Yellow means they're just kind of meandering back and forth like they are right here. Uh, go in and watch the show I did last week for Trading Simplified. My Trading Simplified show, you can find it on my website. And I talk a lot about that and explain these in a lot more details when I talk about the plugin. But anyway, so kind of another bow tie here. I, would, I wouldn't count this one as a new bow tie. I just count this one as the original bow tie. So this is more of a thrust lower. And then as it pulls back, it's setting up a short on the daily chart, okay? So again, I wouldn't be buying it in here unless I was on a 15 minute chart and it broke out or something, you know, S and G type of trading. So it does look like it could be in trouble on the daily chart. If we look at some of these other altcoins real quick, you'll see that a lot of them are in trouble. And I'll just pull up a few random ones here and there. You can see everything kind of imploded overnight. 
what's Matic doing? That's one that I think I still have a position in, believe it or not, if I can find it. But anyway, as you go through these, you can see that they all got whacked pretty hard overnight, but some of them are already coming back. Take a look at uh, ADA. I mean, that actually looks okay. I wouldn't rush out and buy it. Let's just see what's happening. But I'm pretty amazed that a lot of these have come back as much as they have. I guess I was looking forward to getting home at a reasonable hour tonight, but maybe when I get done, I might have to fire off a couple of intra intraday trades in the Bitcoins and the altcoins, or shit coins, as we call them. That's HYT, so that's not vulgar. Anyway, let's see if we can find Manic real quick. Polygon is what they call it now. It's hard to grab these little things. Here we go. So this one's all over the place, but you can see that it, it sold off really hard overnight. It came back nicely. And that looks funny. It should, I thought it was more than that. Are we in a weekly or something here? No, it's a daily. Boy, it feels a lot uglier when you're actually trading these things, huh? <laughs> but yeah, you look at something like this, and that's not a bear market yet, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that you can't be cautious and shouldn't be cautious, okay? You should. So let's hop into the telechart, and let's take a look at, just because I'm, I can flip through telechart pretty quick. Let's start with the P's. So the P's are now back above their moving averages, the vote type moving averages, that is. And the 10 actually can continue to cross, but the red, which is the 20 EMA, has turned up, as you can see, and the 30 EMA has turned up, as I say each week, I think. And I learned this from Greg Morris, and it's something that I probably backed in by accident through empirical research, is that when a market closes below an exponential moving average, that exponential moving average will turn down. We could put in a 200 day exponential moving average. And on this day here, according to Greg, it's mathematics, right? Look at how fast this EMA turned down. I know Tiny Elvis is gonna slip out in a minute. I could, I could feel him coming. So let me just show you something really quick of the P's. So if we go back to this little peak back here, we're still under water, okay? going all the way back for about a month and a half, five or six weeks, okay? So that's a, a little concern that we haven't made a whole lot of progress. And it's been pretty choppy. It's kind of funny, you come in at the end of the day and it's like, oh man, it would have been a great day to trade those ETFs. And I've been getting kind of chewed up. I don't know about you guys, but it's like I'll nail one of them and it'll look fantastic. And then on the other ones, I'll get chewed up to where it's it's barely worth the uh, worth the process or not even worth the process. But I'd be interested to know if you guys are having a similar experience. And one of the things I've been working on, let me just show you real quick when it comes to that. Okay, so take a look at like, like LabVIEW, for instance. Okay. And these are multiple volatilities. Okay. A four day, a 30 day, a six day, a 20 day, a 10 day, a 50 day. And one thing that I've been noodling with on and off for a while is, is how to find wide range bar days that start on one end and end at the other holy grail days okay like this day here was a holy grail day if i didn't make money on that day then there's something wrong with me right i need to figure that out but you can see that the volatility has come off quite a bit on a short short term basis in these things and something i've never really played with that much but down here i've got a 10 period atr so you can see the volatility based on this is coming off. Now, you know, but Dave, I thought you didn't use indicators. Well, these aren't indicators. These are just volatility readings to kind of tell me if the market is becoming more or less volatile. And the fact that the volatility has really begin to, began to dive down, that might be why I've been, I've been getting chewed up lately. If I can figure out a trend filter, okay, or a don't trade filter more than a trend filter, then I think I could own the world. But if I could just find out something that'll help me not to trade, then I think that I'll do exceptionally well. And I think volatility might be one of those secrets there. And this is probably why I've been getting chewed up lately in these ETFs. About two weeks ago, I, I thought I had the holy grail. And you know, whenever you feel like you got that holy grail, 
get ready because it's coming. You know, I was talking to one of you guys in the group, and I think I said this last week when we talk about these altcoins. It's like whenever you feel like going car shopping, you need to sell some sell down in your altcoins. So here's Drip, as you can see, and Drip's been kind of hard to make money in lately too. But you can see the volatility has also dropped off quite a bit. If we zoom this in a little bit, maybe it might be a little easier to see. It did spike a while back, but now it's coming right back in. So in general, the volatility is dropping off. And you can see the ATR is really dying out down here too. So maybe I need to sit on my hands a little bit. Gush used to be my favorite. Between Gush and Drip, you should love those two. J-Nug too, J-Nug and J-Dust. Let me just pull those up real quick and we'll finish up the market. Then you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, you go ahead do so now I just got a few things more to show you but yeah j j dust or j well j nug would be just the opposite so let's take a look at j nug you can't short these things by the way if you could i would short every inverse one and just hold on because the all the inverse ones eventually go to zero not enough time to explain why but they do just trust me and if you don't believe me plot them all and plot them under just for splits i think they'll split you to death you think okay like like right now, for instance, very tempting to buy a, a shit ton of UVXY. It's only like four bucks and a half or whatever it is now, whatever it is today. The only problem with that is it's going to keep being inverse. It's going to grind you lower and lower and lower and lower. And then it's going to go to three and two and then they'll reverse split it. And you end up with fewer and fewer shares. And it just doesn't work, unfortunately. You can't just buy them and, and hang on. Anyway, you can see JNUG's a little mixed, but the volatility had a nice little spike here. Now it's beginning to die out again. So maybe when I print money on a day like this, I probably need to say, okay, Dave, you printed money yesterday. You might want to pull in your horns for a couple of days and see how things shake out. Either way, up or down, too. All right, let's get back to the TC. And any questions on anything thus far? And if you want to, again, keep asking questions about individual stock picks. Hopefully we have some for tonight. As I say each week, the Facebook groups kind of eradicated most of the stock picks in here because we talk about them all day. So NASDAQ composites, you have the bow tie down, still a bow tie sell signal. Technically yesterday that, that signal triggered, but it triggered on an opening gap reversal. So I would make this low a conservative entry. And if we take out today's low, I would be concerned. So if you're an aggressive trader, it'd be a good little short right below today's low. The other thing, and you can't time off of this, but you could certainly use it as part of your analysis, is that you've got a nice little double top in place here. So double top followed by a bow tie, that's kind of like a double whammy when it comes to markets. Russell 2000, a little bit of a bounce. You can see it's bow tied down recently. Now, this isn't off all time highs, but all time highs are right back here. So I would still consider this a legitimate signal. Now, if you had a range, a low level range or a mid level range where you had a bow tie one way or the other, and every now and then I'll see somebody bring up one to talk about, and it's like, no, the designer's intent with these with the bow ties is to capture a major trend transition off of major highs or major lows, not to get in and out when the market is just kind of meandering sideways at mid levels. Let's take a look at gold, the commodity. Gold, the commodity has really been on fire as of late. Nice little trend developed there. It was kind of choppy and all over the place. Let's take a look at the metals and mining stocks. You can see they're still looking pretty good in here. We had a gap down a couple of days ago. Well, you know what's helping these commodities along, we'll take a look at the energies too, is the dollar, okay? Dollar down, commodities up because commodities are dollar denominated, okay? Takes more and more and more dollars to buy commodities. Let's take a look at wood real quick. This, this isn't a true graphical representation of, of lumber because this is uh, forestry companies. Kind of interesting though, it's, you know, these, I bump into some people and we're trying to get a contractor out. It's impossible to contract her out right now. It's like, oh, economy economy sucks. You know, we'll try to get somebody, try to get a contractor right now. You know, as they say in uh, take, good luck. <laughs> One of the guys said, oh, lumber's going to go up forever. I'm like, not one Danny. His, his name is Danny, but 
it'd be pretty cool if it was. So <laughs> I could say that to him. Anyway, as you can see, it looks like the moving average is trying to come together on wood. Got a little gap here. So that's looking pretty toppy. Uh, I'm not going to be able to pull up lumber on the fly here, but we'll keep an eye on, on lumber, and I'll report back to you. So energy, so far, just kind of pulling back a little bit. A little gap the other day. I'm not too worried about that. Gaps in commodity stocks don't really bother me as much as they do in, in regular stocks. Gold stocks have been in a pretty good uptrend. We could see some setups here in a pullback. Silver's kind of wide and loose and all over the place, but did break out. Those are silver stocks. Let's take a look at silver the metal. Silver the metal starting to get its act together, as you can see, beginning to work its way higher. This was the day the Reddit boy said, hey, we're going to manipulate the market. No, you don't. <laughs> They found out really quick that they're not bigger than the market. They they got a little cocky. They pushed a little game stock up. You know, now they thought they could just go after everything. Let's go after some silver. Yay. Didn't work. So as we go through some of these sectors, food and beverage still doing pretty good, but food and beverage could be seen as a defensive area. So I wouldn't get too excited about that. Banks are still doing pretty good in here. I think banks do better with higher interest rates. I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. Their spread gets better on the money they, they get from you and the money they loan to other people. But you know me, I'm not going to confuse the issue with facts. Drugs are pretty impressive in here. Not that long ago, I was kind of bearish on drugs. We had a bow tie off of all-time highs, a little bit of a sell-off, but then they got their act together. And I wouldn't rush out and buy drugs right away. But you can see they're looking pretty good, and we're just off of all-time high. So if we continue to follow through there, I think we could see some setups, and it could be worth trading. Biotech, a little bit different story today, notwithstanding. Okay, You can see it's pushing up toward the top of its, or getting ready to surpass its 30-day EMA. And that would certainly be a good thing, but it has its work cut out for it. We have a kind of a bow tie here, a little sloppy but also a first thrust, the trigger would have been right here on this day here, pretty good sell off out of that, a little bounce right back. This is why shorting is a pain in the butt, right? You get short, you're feeling great, you make a lot of money, and the market goes right back up, knocks you out, okay? And then what does it do then? Well, of course it turns right back down, <laughs> you know? Short side, a little tougher than the long side, but it's important to play both sides of the market as I preach. Take a look at health services, decent day there too. It looked like they were trying to roll over in here, but with today's action, they're certainly looking a heck of a lot better. MNC is losing steam, okay? This is material construction. You can see the bow ties are coming together. Got a little gap down. So I don't think lumber is going to go up forever. I think some people are like, you know what? F that. I'm not going to build right now. I, I have a bad habit of doing things myself instead of hiring people, but... I'm going to actually hire somebody to build my outdoor kitchen. And it's like just getting these guys to come out is is next to impossible. They're so busy. But I think I'd be willing to bet and we're trying to get a pool in too. We can't get a pool guy to call us back. But like I told my wife, and she fully agreed, she was kind of like having the same thought at the same time, which happens after a while being married, by the way. It's like a year from now, if we don't get a pool in by then, our phone's going to ring off the hook from these guys, you know? So it's all cyclical. It all ha it all goes through a cycle and on. A lot of people, I think, not to confuse the issue with facts, but I think a lot of people are going to tap the brakes when they see how much the lumber price prices have gone up. Retail, a little bit of a bounce, but you can see it's kind of lost some steam in here, kind of like the piece. You know, I wouldn't get too excited about retail. Transports overall kind of hanging in there, looking pretty darn good for the most part. You got Landry Light above the 30 EMA, so that's certainly a good thing. Semiconductors have been kind of toppy, kind of like the NASDAQ, double top it here. First thrust trigger here, and then bow tie would have triggered, I guess, the same day the NASDAQ did. And now we push right back up. See the short side, they mess with you. Like somebody just said to group, it's like it's been brutal on the short side. As soon as you get short, they come in and punish you. And that's why I haven't gone too crazy on the short side yet. But I think I think now's the time to let things shake out. Software is looking pretty questionable in here today, notwithstanding. So today certainly makes a big difference. As I preach, one day can make all the difference in the world. Weekly trigger above high. You're talking about Bitcoin? Uh, yeah. 
Okay, uh, any individual stocks tonight or did we talk about them all in Facebook as of late? Going once. Wow, no no questions tonight. Cool. I mean, not cool. <laughs> I guess we're doing a good job during the day. Well, kind of short and sweet tonight. Fantastic. Everybody, if we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. I appreciate you taking time again out of your busy schedule. And have a great weekend again. And may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.